Hello everybody. We are going to conclude the module one of the course uh, Dynamics and Control. The module one was uh, System and Signals, some examples. And uh, I am uh, Pedro Albertos, professor of the Polytechnic University of Valencia in Spain. And today, as I mentioned, we are going to deal with uh, signals. They are here, there are some samples of uh, signals and uh, the idea is to describe what is a signal and how we can identify and classify the signals attached to, to systems. So this is, as I mentioned, this will complete the module one, uh, examples of systems and signals. So what are we interested in when we look at the, the system? So, uh, assuming this figure that the, the person which is uh, observing the system is mainly interested in the signals coming from the system. For instance, if you are looking at the sky, then you can uh, see the sun, you can see the moon, the stars, then these are signals coming from the solar system. And really you are not interested in modifying the solar system because you cannot do nothing there. But uh, you are mainly interested in the information coming from the system. In other cases, just uh, you want to uh, modify the system to uh, change the structure, to change the components and so on. And then of course you use the signals, but not for getting information uh, about the behavior of the system, but uh, to get information about how the system is behaving and in which way you can modify is its behavior. So let's go to clarify what is the concept of a signal. If you open a window and you look outside, so what signals can you perceive? The intensity of the light, if it's dark, if it's bright, the speed of the wind, the humidity, you can also see a flying bird or an aircraft, you can see the dropping rain, these are uh, signals. And also if you look around in uh, the room where you are now, uh, the lights can be on or off, uh, how many people are there. So these are signals providing information about your uh, environment or about the system you are observing. On the other hand, what is not a signal? Uh, looking uh, uh, again outside, the land, the mountains, the buildings, the size of the window, this is not a signal because this is fixed, this is constant, this is not changing over the time, over the time of your observation. So uh, if you look inside the room, what you can say that is not a signal, for instance, the dimensions of the screen, uh, the position of the beamer, these are fixed, they are not changing during your period of observation. So, um, in conclusion, what is a, a signal? A signal is a magnitude which varies with uh, time and or position. And what is important is that this magnitude uh, could be a physical one, a chemical one, an economical one, a social, or a psychological one, as we saw in one uh, in some examples. So <clears throat> we can conclude that uh, a signal is uh, a magnitude which varies with time, and if the magnitude is fixed, we will consider this like a parameter or a constant variable. <clears throat> How we can represent a signal? Well, consider, for instance, a thermometer. The thermometer, uh, like this one, you have the uh, information and then you can represent like, like a graph with uh, the value of the temperature evolving over the time. Or you can represent this uh, signal as a table. Or you can just uh, represent a graph but only with the temperature at the times you uh, are measuring it. And you can all this uh, information a store in a tape or in a drum and later on you can retrieve this information. But in any case, what you are dealing with the temperature as a function of the time. So in that case, the signal we are interested in is the temperature 
and the temperature it changes with the time and we can represent like a table, like a graph and we can store in an electronic uh, device like a tape or a drum. <coughs> Which kind of signals we may consider? First of all, the binary signals. The light is on or off, my hand is up or down. These are binary signals. But uh, you can also consider digital signals. If you look at your mobile and you look at the time, you see the time uh, at this moment and this is a digital signal. But if instead of that you have an analog watch, then you see the different uh, times and in a continuous way. Um, the signals could be stochastic if they are varying randomly and you cannot predict what is the next time. For instance, the time is not stochastic. In the next second will be one second more, in two seconds, in three seconds and so on. But there are some other uh, variables which are stochastic and you cannot predict the value in the next instant of time. And some others are fuzzy. A fuzzy uh, signal is a, a signal which is not very well defined. For instance, uh, to measure the temperature in this room, we can see that it's uh, hot or cold. In this, case, in this case, it will be binary. We can uh, represent by a number of uh, digits, then they will be digital. Or we can represent in a graph uh, continuously. Or we can say that uh, just uh, in a fuzzy way, it's warm, it's warmer than yesterday, it's uh, colder than uh, tomorrow, and so on. In this case, the information of the signal is uh, fuzzy. And there are many other ways of expressing signals. Attached to the system, the variables could be uh, disturbances when these signals are acting on the system or can be manipulated. In both cases, these kind of signals are inputs. An input signal to a system is a signal which is acting on the system but it doesn't depend on the system. The disturbances or the manipulated variables are generated outside. For instance, if I'm going to consider the temperature in this room, uh, the temperature outside the room is a disturbance. But the heating I'm inputting in the room is a manipulated variable. I can put more or less heat, but I cannot control, I cannot manipulate the temperature outside. So this manipulated will be changed by an actuator, uh, and I can control and I can modify the the uh, input uh, heating. In the system there are many variables and some of them can be sensed and can be measured and this will provide us information about the system. But there are many other variables which are internal. All these we will call process variables. Are variables depending on the behavior of the system and they are, of course, influenced by the disturbances and the uh, manipulated variables. Even uh, they are, uh, could be sensed, that, uh, that means measured, or just uh, not measured, but uh, appearing inside the system. This is the example of the room temperature that I mentioned before, that we have some inputs and some uh, internal variables uh, considering the temperature of the room. Now let's consider the system related to signals. They could be signal generators, signal processors, sensors uh, or transducers, receivers and transmitters. Let's uh, have some example. Uh, <clears throat> we may have a signal generator which is a system producing a signal. The signal could be, for instance, a signal like that, that one, a stochastic one, uh, could be any kind of signal generated by a, a, a process or a system. We may have uh, signal processors, for instance a filter. The input is a noisy signal and the output is a clean signal. So the, the, the objective or the goal of the process, the system, is to filter this signal. Or we may have a sampler. We have this clean signal and we, then we want to consider only the value of this signal at different uh, time instants. And then this is a process or a system which is called a sampler. <coughs> we can, uh, for instance, consider here a um, greenhouse 
and we want to measure the temperature and the humidity. But we, of course, we need the sensors for that, but we don't, need, uh, we don't want to be inside the greenhouse for that. So we can uh, make a connection through internet or through cables or whatever, and then uh, in one side is the greenhouse with the information, the sensors and the actuators, and in the other ha is hand is in the office, the uh, receiver, the receiver and the transmitter to uh, handle this information. So, <clears throat> but systems are not just uh, for signals. They may be more important, uh, they may have more important uh, purpose of transforming materials and energy. And here there is a, an example. We have a, a music sheet with uh, uh, any kind of uh, performance, like a cantata or like a piano uh, concert. And then uh, we are playing and we are transforming that into uh, sound. This sound is recorded and this uh, sound will be later on uh, stored. Then we can see that the system in that case, from the music sheet, we are performing, we are obtaining mu music sound, there is some noise added because there is uh, uh, the recording room with some noise going through the microphone, which is another device, and then the microphone output is going to the recorder, and then we finally got the recorded music. So, uh, as you can see, the information is the same. There is the same information in the music sheet, in the music in the air, and in the recorded uh, sound but the support is different and the system is transforming the signal from uh, the sheet to the air music to the uh, electronic uh, recording. So what we have seen uh, in this uh, module one, we have seen the concept of uh, systems uh, and signals. Uh, we saw some examples in the nature, also human-made examples, and uh, today we have seen uh, examples of signals and we have seen the interaction between systems uh, and signals. So what is next uh, is the way we can model and we can uh, represent and store and handle the system and signals. And this will be the subject of uh, the next uh, module. Thank you.